What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we left off with needing to make more mana from Botania in order for us to make more Terra Steel to spawn the Guardia Gaian, Gaia Guardian, whatever boss. Yeah, so we were using these Endo Flames in order to generate mana, and this thing was working fine. Uh, problem is, every time I come over here to like craft something, I end up picking up the piece of coal. This thing breaks. I have to put another piece of coal over here. And then this generates mana not that quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, it works, and it's enough for us to like automate making mana, but we should look at upgrading this thing. But not only should we look at upgrading this, but we also have quests to make better flowers to upgrade. I think we're going to go ahead and go with the cake flower. Yeah. So in order for us to generate mana with this, we have to have cake placed in the world nearby it in order for it to eat a slice and then generate mana from that slice of cake, right? Uh, so we have a couple of things we have to do. We have to figure out how we're going to make cake, how we're going to place it in the world, and then also we have to make this flower. So let's do Botania generating flowers because I can never remember how to spell these things. So it's this one here. So in order for us to craft this, we need to get ourselves a rune of gluttony. Okay, so that's a tier two, or no, that's a, is that tier, that's tier three. So you have like the elements and you have the seasons and then you have the sins, I guess. So in order for us to do that, we need to make ourselves a rune of winter, which I don't think we have made yet. Uh, and then we need rune of fire, which we should already have fire. Yeah, we have a rune of fire. Okay, so we already have that. So rune of winter, in order for us to make one of these, we need to get ourselves two blocks of snow, wool, cake, uh, water, and earth. Water, earth. I think we have those. Uh, do we have cake? I think it has to be actual Minecraft cake, not these other types of cake. Let me go and double check that real quick, though, because I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, the recipe says regular cake for all of these and just different colors of wool. Okay, so we needed uh, wool, two snow, one wool, two snow blocks. We got plenty of snow in here. Now, is there anything else that I needed to take a look at um, in order to make the winter rune? We have all of this stuff. So we just have to make ourselves a cake. Well, we don't have the stuff to make a cake right now on us, or I guess in our applied energistic system. But I do believe we had uh, some milk from long, long ago over here. Yeah, 13 stacks of this fresh milk that we kind of made in a cheaty way, mm, but it's fine. It's it's fine. Just because our uh, cow in a jar let us make uh, pretty much unlimited fresh milk, even though it didn't have enough in there to make it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Anyway, we're not going to be using <laughs> that fresh milk to make cakes. We're going to be doing it another method. But for right now, we do need to make the stuff in order to make the cake flour. So on here, we need to do two snow, a uh, wool, earth, water, cake, right? So that should uh, produce, is it done? I'm actually kind of confused. Why is that not working? It gives me the X on there. It sounded like everything was ready, but it sounds like this mana spreader is not sending mana over there. Let me go and do a shift right click and a shift right click. I'm not entirely sure why, unless it happens so fast that it's already done and it just doesn't show it. So let's do living rock. Let's put that on here and do a right click. No, something is in fact broken. Let's point it this way. That shows that we have mana in there. This mana spreader is not working. Is it because it has a redstone signal? It might be because it has a redstone signal. Okay, so that's the problem. So we do a right click. Shift right click. That should craft it. Yeah. Okay. So that potentiometer here breaks our mana spreader. That's a problem. We're probably going to be getting rid of this here very soon anyway. So let's just move on. So there we go. We get our runes back. Plus we get our rune of winter. So that's awesome. Uh, so rune of winter is done. So now we need the gluttony rune. So that's rune of winter plus fire. So fire, winter. We don't need these other runes anymore. And we'll put the potentiometer away. Uh, and then we need two mana diamonds, which we have right here. And then again, we're going to need a living rock in order to finish up the recipe. So these guys, just queue those all on there. You can queue that on there as well. 
This should finish up quite quickly because of our mana lens and the upgrade spreader. And we're done. Cool. All right, so now we have our Rune of Gluttony. Uh, so we needed that in order to make this flower here. And this is done in the Petal Apothecary. So we need a Pixie Dust, two white, two orange, two brown. Uh, what do we have? We have two brown. We have white. Do we have orange? Uh, we have mystical orange flowers. Okay. And it was two of them, right? Yeah, two orange, two white, two brown, a gluttony, and then we need a pixie dust, so we need a mana pearl. And there's this guy. And we'll just cue that in there. We'll get that. All right, so we haven't done the petal apothecary in a minute. Pretty much, you just put all the ingredients in there. And then you drop a vanilla wheat seed on top of that, and that's all you got to do. Cool. So there we go. There is our cake flower. Now, this thing will eat cake in a certain range around it. I'm not actually sure what that range is. I think we can make ourselves the um, the monocle, the mana seer monocle, and this should tell us the range around it. But in order to do that, we need mana steel and mana glass. I'm not sure if we have the stuff we do. Okay, so that goes into a bobble slot. Uh, does it, go, it goes into a specific one, apparently. Oh, there was a quest for this. Okay, I just want to place this flower down and kind of see what the range is on it because I'm not entirely sure. Ooh, that's a big range, isn't it? Okay, so that is one, two, three, four, five away. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so an 11 by 11 area, this thing can eat cake. That's a pretty big range, I would say. Um, so I probably want to turn this into a fluting flower so we can... Uh, get rid of one of these endo flames, I suppose. Man, the endo flames. I thought that used coal in a very small area. That's one, two, three, four way. That's smaller, but it is still a pretty large area that it can eat coal from. Yeah, I didn't realize that before. Anyway, uh, so we want to be able to get cake out here, and we want our cake flour to eat it. So probably what I'm going to do, I'm going to make like three more of these, I think. Yeah. I want to make like three more of these, and then we're going to start figuring out how to get cake for these flowers to eat them. So let me go ahead and craft the other three, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we got ourselves our four floating cake flowers, and I did a little bit of testing on this. So it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, when you're looking at this flower, it shows you like the area left and right, right? But it doesn't show you how high it works, and if you try and get below the flower... It doesn't show that uh, it's in the area of effect anymore, does it? Yeah, that's kind of a problem. Um, but anyway, I was kind of testing this, and that red velvet cake we got last time uh, does actually work. So yeah, if I place one of these down here, we can see that it gets eaten by all of these flowers. I do believe, yeah, this one's sparkly now. So it can see all the way down to the ground, which is fantastic. So all of those flowers do work, and they are providing mana. Um, you know what? I actually did not check to make sure they're all linked to the right mana spreader. Yeah, this one is not. That needs to be here. Uh, this one is linked to the correct one. Okay, so the bottom one was just closer to this one when I placed it, so it just automatically linked to this one instead of up here. But we're fine now. Okay. So the next thing is we need to get ourselves cake. And we need cake, uh, well, I guess on the ground or anywhere in the area of effect that that's going to work. Now, there is a thing that we can do to make cake. In this mod pack, um, you can do Astral Sorcery Starlight Transmutation, right? So if we get Starlight coming over here, we can point that at a pumpkin, and after a certain amount of time, it turns into a cake. So really what we're going to want to do is get ourselves ways to place pumpkins in the world, and then get our Starlight power that we're generating over here to transmutate that pumpkin. So... I just got done making some auto placers. We had 10 of them. I'm not exactly sure how many of these we're going to need. But yeah, as we saw, uh, anywhere on the ground seems to work with these things. So if we place, I don't know, like three of them here. And we fill those full of pumpkins. They should place pumpkins on top of them. And then we need, just need to get Astral Sorcery to shine Starlight onto them. Yeah, and then that should turn those into cakes. So let's do that over here as well. And then I think I'm going to place them back here. So something like that. 
So now what we need to do is get the starlight over here uh, and shining onto where the pumpkins will be. I guess the next thing we should do, let's grab, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's put a stack of pumpkins into each one of these things. Just so we can kind of see where we're going to be and where we need to link the starlight to. Because we're not going to be linking it to the auto place, or we're going to be linking the starlight to these pumpkins. Okay, so there's that, that, and this. Now, it is possible for us to move this out of here. We can take the mana that this is generating, fill up another mana pool somewhere else, and have that mana pool be powering this elven mana spreader, which is going to be doing our runic altar. So this doesn't have to be here. We could put three more of them right here and do a full ring around if we wanted to do that. That's just one thing that we can do. Uh, these flowers, we can move down here and kind of like put them around the mana pool in the center if we wanted to do that as well. Just so that we have a few options. But anyway, uh, let's try and get this thing going the way it is right now. So what we want to do is take uh, one of our Celestial Collector Crystals and we want to split the beam coming off of it. Uh, so we have a couple of options here. This one is already being split in this prism lens going this way and this way. So I'm not sure we want to use this particular one. This one over here we just have going directly into our ritual. Uh, so we could split this beam. We could have like a prism lens right here. So have this going into the prism lens. Have that shine over into this lens right here. And it'll go into the ritual. And then we could take the other beam or we could make another beam coming off that lens and send it over this way. And I think that's what we want to do. So over in our iridescent altar, I already have set up another thing for a prism lens. And we have ourselves a maxed out celestial crystal here. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our resonating wand and we will get that thing cooking up. I think we probably have more crystals. Oh no, I took those out already. Yeah, I've been trying to make more of these things. Uh, we have one more fully done one and then we have two more. I should probably grab one of these and put it in here and let it split just so we can keep getting more of those pure crystals formed. Uh, all right, so this one's done. Yeah, prism lens. So let's take this. And we'll do that. So I need my linking wand, which I think is in my applied energistics. Linking, yeah, right here. All right, so we can unlink this. So I'll do a shift right click, and then I'll unselect the thing. So we will right click to select it. We'll right click here to select that. And then I will let go of it. I'll right click onto here to select the lens to go over to this one, or I guess the prism lens to go to the lens. And yeah, so we are now sending that over to our ritual pedestal just the same way. Mm -hmm. But we want to split this off and send it over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab another lens. I don't know a whole lot about astral sorcery and moving the starlight around. I don't know how far this goes. Um, so I'm going to try this, and it might be that that's too far away from here or something else along those lines. Yeah, I don't know how this all works. Uh, but one thing I do know is we are actually going to need another prism lens over here. Once we get the starlight over, probably on top of this mana spreader, we're going to want to split that off into multiple sections. Yeah, in order to do that, we need another prism lens. So I will have to make another one of those. But uh, in the meantime, let's do a right click on here, right click onto here. So that should send a beam of starlight over here, but this isn't going anywhere yet. So we want to have another one down here somewhere. Can I get a torch? We'll do that. We'll put the lens right here. I'm hoping this works. And these are maxed out, by the way. 900 size and then 100 purity and cutting each. Yeah, I hope we can move Starlight around like this without any like detrimental loss. Does that work? Okay, I am not seeing a beam go over there, so that could potentially be too far away. Did it see anything? It didn't see anything. Let me try putting another lens, like, I guess in between somewhere, maybe right here. So if we do this to here, does that work? Okay, so it turned. Oh, maybe that's the thing. Maybe I should unlink it and just kind of figure out how far away we need to go. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter, actually. So I could probably get, grab this one and send it over here. That should work. Okay, so now we just need to make another prism lens, send it, set it up over here somewhere, and then link that to all these different pumpkins. 
All right, guys. Well, this seems to be working pretty okay. The pumpkins are definitely converting into cakes, and the cake flowers are eating them. I did have to move the cake flowers from uh, where they were before because they were kind of blocking these back cakes from being generated from these beams of light being able to do stuff. But yeah, I feel like we are definitely having cakes around for the uh, the cake eating flowers and. Like, they're always cake for them to eat, is what I'm trying to say. How are we doing on this mana spreader? Okay, so we are overloading this mana spreader. So we are going to need more of these mana spreaders in order for those flowers to put enough mana uh, into... Yeah, into um, the mana pool all at once. Yeah, we definitely need more than that. Even though this does have the potency and velocity lens on there. Okay, so next step is probably each one of these flowers is going to get their own mana spreader. Okay, well, we got the cake down. We have uh, 12 of these different pumpkins turning into cakes. They're all linked up by our prism lens. Thing is, though, now we don't have access to this mana pool to, like, take the mana from this and use it on the runic altar. Yeah, we need a mana spreader on this thing pointing at the altar so we can get that mana out. Or we need a way to get the mana from this pool to other pools. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to have that mana pool come over and fill these two over here. Uh, these need to be full anyway for us to continue to use this portal indefinitely. And we can also put a mana spreader on this pool and have it point at our runic altar for the time being until we figure out where we want this thing to be. So in order to do this, uh, we need to get some sparks. Uh, I'm going to place a spark on this mana pool here. Uh, it is there even though it's kind of hard to see and that pylon's in the way and we're going to place one here. Now uh, we have a spark on this mana pool on our uh, terrestrial plate to make terra steel and on these two pools over here, but nothing's happening. So what we need to do is say that this spark right here is going to be recessive. So yeah, there are augments that we can place on these different pools. So a recessive marked spark will send mana to other sparks that have a mana pool on them that don't have any augments at all. So this mana pool should send mana to both this pool and this pool over here. So that's what we want to do. So let's grab the recessive one. So we need pixie dust, mana steel, plus a rune of earth. So we have rune of earth and mana steel, but we need a pixie dust. So again, that is a pearl through the portal, and that should be all we need to do. Okay, so now we have the recessive augment. So as soon as I place that on this spark here, we should start pulling the mana from this pool and sending it over to both of these. Well, here's a problem. This pool right here is too far away for that to work. So we might have to set up an intermediate pool somewhere else. Like maybe have that one sent to here and this one sent over to these guys. But either way, this is going to get mana to another pool that we can use. Uh, so runic altar we can set up here. And then our mana spreader we can place here and point at it. That will get me to where I need to be uh, for now. No, I need this guy. So do a shift right click. Oop. Oh, I have this set the wrong way. Fine mode. Shift right click on this. Shift right click on this. So now I can do some more runic crafting. Yeah, in order to get that mana over to this one, we're going to have to do a little something different, I think. Well, actually, I thought that mana pool was too far away because you can see the particles coming over to this guy and nothing going over here. But you can definitely see this pool is filling up. Yeah, so it is. Even though it doesn't have particles coming over here, it is receiving mana just the same, and it is a lot more full than where we left it before, so we won't have to do anything else. Yep, the uh, particles not going over there tricked me. Alright guys, so a little bit of time has passed. Our mana pools have filled up, and this one's full. So we have three full mana pools. The only thing is, we don't have a way to replenish our pumpkins that are turning into cakes here. So that's what we're going to work on next. Um, so I have taken the time off camera here to completely fill in underneath all of this area. I don't remember if I showed that before, but yeah, I filled it all in with gravel. Then I came back through with an exchanger and I exchanged these outward facing blocks. Um, yeah, with quartz. So it looks a little bit nicer on the outside here anyway. Uh, but yeah, there are some things that we're going to have to change. So like you can see there's quartz here, but that really shouldn't be looking like that. So I'm probably going to place quartz. I'm sorry, gravel on top of this quartz to kind of like hide that. But the reason why it's like that is because underneath, yeah, that's the way the rest of this wall is. So to make that completely flat all the way down here, we had to expose just a little bit of quartz on the outside. 
So anyway, I just got done digging out from underneath here. Um, it's not fully dug out. We'll do that eventually when we need extra room to do stuff. But for right now, underneath our Botania area, we have this dugout, and then I did put in elevator so we can go up and down quite quickly. Uh, so I'm running Applied Energistics wire over here. Uh, we have six channels being used on this particular wire. So yeah, we can take one channel and hook it up to this interface. This interface is going to uh, craft fertilizer, so we can always pump fertilizer into this garden cloche. Uh, so this is a brand new garden cloche that I just made. Behind that, we have ourselves a infinite water. Yep, just the bottom tier one. Nothing fancy there. That's just pushing water into this. Uh, we have an item conduit that is extracting out of the interface and into the front, which is going to put the fertilizer here. Now we need another conduit to extract out of the garden cloche and put the contents into our auto placers up here. Now it is connected. Uh, yeah, all these conduits are connected, but honestly, it doesn't need to be connected. So I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect that right there. Okay, so that item conduit connects right to here and it doesn't link up with anything else. And then we have a conduit here that's extracting on the orange channel because we're extracting pumpkins and that's going to be going up here. So one of these needs to be set to insert and we're going to insert on the orange channel because that's what we're extracting on. Uh, and then I'm going to use a conduit probe here. and I'm going to do a shift right click to copy the settings. Uh, we are on the copy. You can do a shift scroll to switch between the modes. Say so we're on the copy paste setting. So we just want to right click on all of these guys. So they are all inserting and we're inserting on the orange channel. Okay, so all of those are done. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, this guy right here does need to be set to round robin enabled. That way I'll start putting pumpkins in all the different um, auto placers up here. So the only other thing we need to do is connect our applied energistics down here. So we do have a any conduit that I started placing, but I didn't really know how much I was going to place. So I only placed a couple. So we can grab some more of the semi conduit here and just fill the rest of this in. So that goes there. I think that's the same, even though it doesn't really look connected. And that goes here. So that connects to this cable. So that sends our applied energistics through this all the way down. And we should start seeing that we're going to be generating some fertilizer here once everything connects up. It might take it a minute. There we go. So now we're generating fertilizer. And when the fertilizer runs out over here, it should fill in just like so and craft more. And I'll just put that back into our system there so we're not crafting needlessly. So the next step is obviously we need to get ourselves some dirt so we can grow pumpkins. Yeah, we have pumpkin seeds already. So we can just put dirt here, pumpkin here. We have the fertilizer. So we're growth modifier three. And yep, it's just going to be generating pumpkin after pumpkin. And those things should be extracted out. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have that set to always active. What's going on here? We aren't getting... What is it doing? It is acting super weird. Yeah, the power isn't staying in there for some reason. We do have a flux point that is sending power all the time on my network. It's doing weirdness here. Uh, I guess we could try putting power into a different spot. Oh, yeah. You know what? I do remember what the problem is. The flux ducts. We need something in here that has a power buffer. Yeah, these act weird without like a flux duct connected to it for some reason. So if I do that and then I place this here, that'll fill up the internal power on this. And that should fix this, I think. Yeah, we're gaining power now. It's not always low. Yeah, the power is going up, so we should just be generating pumpkins all the time. Looks like that is a little bit better now. Yep, that's good. Okay, so I did not set this to extract always active, so we'll do that. Now the pumpkin should find a home in our auto placers up above. And eventually, given enough time, these things should all fill up, and then we'll have pretty much infinite mana. All right, guys, so the next thing that we need to do now that we have two mana pools, or I guess three mana pools completely full of mana, and we have three sparks on those mana pools. We should be able to make ourselves another Terra Steel. This time it should go a lot faster than the first Terra Steel we made. So if I place that here, that here, and that here, yeah, we can definitely see things are happening quite quickly. 
And you can get this to go even faster still if you get more mana pools with more sparks within range of your Terra Steel. Mm -hmm. So now that we have this extra Terra Steel ingot, we should be able to set up our Gaia, our Guardian of Gaia area so we can fight the boss. Another thing we need to do is take our Lexica Batania and throw it through this portal. We haven't done that yet. And that upgrades it with a little bit more information. Mm -hmm. So if we go back here, we can see... Where is it? Uh, miscellaneous. Oh man, did they change this? I thought there was one of these where you can do the Gaia fight. Maybe it's under here? Oh, it is under here. Ritual of Gaia. Okay, so we go through here. Uh, creating Gaia pylons. We have a different recipe for that. Uh, so this is what we need to do. We need to set this up in such a way. So uh, we need some space. Yeah, I can't quite do it over here. A uh, good space to do it would be right where we've already set this up, but I think we'll just move it over here, and then I'll have to figure out a better way of doing it. Uh, I do want this beacon one in the ground, so I'm going to break this, and we're going to set it up like so. Okay, I might have to put some dirt over here, fill in some creeper holes that have happened, or whatever, uh, and then we are going to need those iron blocks, so iron. Let's grab those things. Yeah, so down two blocks, we need to place our iron. I don't really care about the beacon effects. We're only placing this here uh, because the ritual requires it. But yeah, the beacon effects, I don't think it really matters, especially since we have uh, pretty much infinite saturation, which means we have like infinite regeneration and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we could put regeneration down, I suppose. We could do the vanilla thing. Um... But we have to give it one of these. I don't know. It's just, to me, it's just not worth even messing with it. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead, fill this back in so we have a nice solid ground to work with. Like so. And then we just have to place these Gaia pylons around where they're supposed to go. Like so. Cool. So now the structure is complete. Uh, I just need to fill this in a little bit, extend this out, fill in these creeper holes, like I said, and then we should be able to do the fight. All right, guys. Well, I flattened out the surface pretty good, and then I tried clicking it on there. And I was like, nope, doesn't work, and we had to extend out the uh, area further. And then I did that, and then I tried again. It's like, nope. So I tried getting rid of some of the trees that were around here. We're going to give this a go again. It might be that there's some of those blocks in the way. Well, check it out. Hopefully, this just works this time, though. Uh, okay, so it says there is an obstruction. It might be this right here. Let me go ahead and try and shave this away a little bit. Okay, so I got tired of trying to get this thing to work down below. So we just went up in the air, used an angel block to uh, place in midair. Did our beacon on top of that. We're going to place the rest of this ritual here. And hopefully this time things are going to work. Uh, oh, I didn't place the beacon, did I? I was like, why is that not shooting its beam? So there's that, this, and that. It says structure complete. I don't know. Maybe I had one of those placed wrong before. I sat there for like 20 minutes trying to get it to work, expanding it out, flattening it out, shaving away some of the the mountain, and it wouldn't work. So are we going to work now? I don't know. Hopefully this will. Uh, it might have been the torches were in the way. I honestly don't know, but let's give this a go. It still doesn't work. Okay, we're going to try it in a different way. Maybe the ritual being in the ground flat like I had it before was the problem. Let's try raising it up. Is this going to work? Give it a go. It still doesn't like it. All right, guys. So I'm not sure how I got to work this time, but I got it working. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the bow in my offhand here. And we're going to hold our sword. That should give us a little bit of extra damage on the boss. Yeah. With the multi-shot that we have, this thing is working quite well. Yeah, I've tried so many different ways to get this ritual to work. I'm not sure why it just now decided to work. I did activate the beacon. I tried moving things around so we didn't have dirt covering the beacon. I tried moving it up and down. Um, I did activate the beacon, so we do have a speed effect. I don't know if that's what's causing this to work now or not, but either way, like we got things going now, and that's all that really matters. So, Guy Guardian should be dead. Like one more wave of, bo of like trash mobs, I guess. And then we should be able to attack it one more time. And we should be good to go here. 
So as soon as this thing comes down, it's dead. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I did get some wither effect, but that doesn't really matter that much. Uh, our regeneration should take care of it. And we have decent uh, armor here. So we did end up getting a drop of evil. That's kind of cool, I guess. Bunch of armor. Let's throw all of that away. We don't need any of that. Uh, we did get eight of these Gaia spirits, which is fantastic. That's what we're going for. Um, yeah. So I did see... Let's get rid of that, too. We don't need that. I did see that you can craft these. If we look at the recipe for it, we can fight the Gaia Guardian more. Or we can do this recipe here, which might be easier or automatable i'm not exactly sure uh to get this in the future so we don't have to do the fight so we have two different options i don't know how many more of these gaia things that we are going to need but should we need a whole lot of it i think the blood magic way might be what we want to do uh so let's take a look at this one more time the uses for these guys can be used uh to make the tier two fight it can be used to make the uh shard of laputa when you pronounce that, or at least upgrade it, I guess. Does it craft into it? Oh, yeah, you can craft into it. And I think we do need that for a quest. Let's take a look here. Yeah, we need just the first tier of that for one of these quests. Um, anything else? So, yeah, we did complete this. So, let's go ahead and claim this. We will pop it in. We get ourselves an advanced power cell that holds 40 million RF. I don't think we need that. I think we're pretty much good on power storage using the mechanism means. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Whoa, camera. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> it took us quite some time to get this thing going here, but we did get it figured out. Uh, we technically don't have to do that again. Yeah, I still don't understand why that ritual wasn't working uh, on the ground down below, there's something wrong. Maybe there was like uh, an open space there and it was complaining about it. I honestly don't know. But anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.